This is a quick uh, outline of the fixture module, the nuclear fixture module, which is part of the Opticam Classic CAD CAM system. Once you've installed it, you just execute or start the, uh, the, the application using the fixture module shortcut. Once it's loaded, you'll see a typical uh, Windows application ribbon bar interface at the top. You'll probably find yours is set to construction initially, um, but this is basically the, the main functions of the software are all listed here. Construction geometry, drawing lines, arcs, uh, circles, um, then you have uh, drawing solid uh, 2D entities and then also creating 3D entities. Uh, modifications, offsetting, shrinking, etc. Editing 3D uh, solid data, uh, viewing options and information, measuring and checking and uh, dimensioning. Layers and figures, layer control, etc. Put putting different components or, um, or line art data onto different layers. And transformations, copy, rotate, mirror, uh, all the normal uh, transformation options. And lastly, really, the fixture module is where we do our nuclear fixture um, functions. And we'll get, what I'll do is I'll import a solid model so we can go through that quickly. Um, I'll go to the file menu and I say CAD import. And I'm going to, I'm going to open a, a parasolid file. It's called box underscore x underscore t. So we have with the software the default uh, parasolid point, uh, text format and 3D IGIS. Other options are available. And my box is imported. On the left side here, you can see my solid geometry uh, workspace. Uh, if I have multiple bodies, uh, maybe I, you know, maybe some nuts and bolts, etc., with this box, you see them listed here. You'd also see assemblies in in the in there. If you see assemblies, we need to uh, explode those, and that's explained in the uh, online uh, the online PDF you can download from our website. But the next step really is to explain to you how the interface, the graphic viewport works. Uh, once I'm in the center of the screen, you'll see my cursor is like a little um, WCS uh, rotational type cursor. So when I drag it around, it rotates. If I move to the left a little bit, it turns into a magnification or zoom uh, cursor. I can do the same thing, drag it around. If I go to the left, it goes to a pan. And that's repeated on the right side also. So pretty simple. Um, at the top of the screen we have our common icons magnification this one here toggles between four views so this is uh, basically my uh, four different views of the same component uh, i can then click this again and then the prompt line comes up and it'll say because this is the active viewport it's saying select the viewport there's also down here the green command line here prompting me to do something so i'm going to pick on that view and now i'm back in the isometric view You've also got options for redrawing, undo, redo, um, options to delete things, and also, you know, the different uh, viewing shortcuts, X, Y, plan, view, isometric, etc. One thing to remember when you're in the middle of a, when you're using the software, you may sometimes need to manipulate the view. So, for instance, if I wanted to delete this box, I could click the delete icon, and it's prompting me for uh, the items to pick in two places. What I might want to do is get to a component or an entity on the back side of this box, but I can't see it right now. So the little shortcut to get around that problem is to keep the shift key down. If I keep the shift key down, my cursor changes into the current uh, viewing uh, function. Right now I'm in, I'm in rotate, so I keep my cursor down. I can rotate my view, keep my finger on my shift key. As soon as I let my shift, shift key back up, the command's back. I can then, then pick whatever I wanted to pick on the alternative side of the box. So if you need to manipulate the view, just remember to keep the shift key down in the middle of the prompt, and then you can change the viewing angle, etc. When it comes to selecting entities in the software, uh, there's several ways to do this. Um, if, I were, if I duplicate this box for the sake of example, I'll just do a uh, copy... Um, a copy translate, I think. So pick this box, and then press the enter. And there are a number of copies. One, and uh, from I'll just say from here to um, I don't know X thirty. Type in X thirty. Okay. Now I've got. If I go back to my centralize my viewing, you'll see everything. So it, X is one on the left, and this one's been moved to X thirty. Now, when it comes to to selecting things. I've got two. You can do it several ways. Uh, when it asks me to select something, I can pick each box, and I've got I've got two two boxes. I've got two entities down here marked in total. 
I can also deselect those by uh, right clicking and say deselect. Um, I can then also press the D button out over the top of the entity and it will deselect. But obviously in, in, the other way you can do window, select stuff is to use a window. So if I drag a window over this, um, if I don't get it all in the box, it won't get it won't select it. So this is these these two uh, two components are outside my my uh, dragging draggable box. So it got nothing. If I get them inside, we're okay. It will get them both. If I alternatively go the opposite direction, click from the top right to the bottom left, the corners go inside out. And as long as it touches any of those four lines, touch the entities underneath, it will select them. So typically, you might use the, what we call the inside out window selection method. And once you've done that, you will then end the command, press the Enter key, or press this green green cross, and it's deleted the items. Of course, I want to use these for our for our demonstration, so I'll just undo that, and I'll delete just one of them. Single pick, and then green green cross or the Enter key. Right to get on to the actual uh, functionality of the fix the nuclear fi nu nuclear fixture module, we go straight to new fixture and we go to the fixture wizard. My measurement system is currently set to inch. You can change it here to, to metric if you so wish. Go to the nuclear wizard and go through this, follow the, basically the, uh, this, the 18 steps of the wizard. This little uh, question mark icon gives us some help. If there's pertinent uh, information uh, that you might need assistance on, what a dimension means, there's a pictorial image there that will uh, point you towards what, what value means what. Uh, on this page, I want to orient my part. So uh, it's come in uh, not the right orientation I want. I could just rotate it around uh, the around the x-axis and and get it to be flat like this. So put 90 in and press the green check, and it's the correct way. But if it came in at a funny angle, I'll just put it back at 45 degrees. I could get it flat. I could align it to a face and align it flat to the x-y plane or parallel to the x-y plane. To do that, I click the align to face. I will click a face, so it's prompted me to select a face. It's then saying select the body as well. If I have multiple bodies, I could just window everything. I could zoom out maybe and do multiple multiple selection with my window. Or I could just pick it. I've only got one, so I just pick it, and I'll just end the command. And I want to date it. I want to make it X Y, the X Y plane, and I want to keep that face upwards. If I uncheck that, the box will go upside down. So it's just a way to uh, so you can, when you select the face, does it does it stay upwards up, upright or not? So now it's putting it basically x0, y0, z0. Z I want to move it up a little bit in z, so I can just press this center button. It will put it at z, z2 by default, which is our default home position, x0, y0, z2. On the right side here, we've got typical icons for doing you know, functions you might want to use over and over. Um, and also a button here for resetting the default. So if you change anything, you can click this button and it puts back a decent set of defaults for you. Now I go to the next step. Here we um, we determine the material we're going to use to fixture the part. So the blade material and the base plate material. You can choose from a standard uh, set of steel gauges. I'm going to use 11 gauge. And it just fills these out for me. You can put these numbers in yourself. You should measure this material uh, to get it quite accurate because if you make it too tight or, or too too wide, you'll either have a, a fixture that won't go together properly or it will be too sloppy. So it's important to make sure that you have uh, the, the right, the correct material thickness. Um, there's a material undersize oversize, and what that does, where these purple and green lines intersect or they interlock, it just gives us a little bit of a clearance value. So in this case, it'll put five thousandths per side, so the uh, part goes together nicely. We can also put in a material thickness of the. With this, 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 this is what the software will encounter. Um, the thinnest piece of material it might have to scan or look at. So, if you had an upside down U section, you would, if you can imagine, it would be the the uh, the, 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 the the U, the bottom, the bottom of the U shape would uh, be the thinnest material. Uh, so, maybe if it was eleven gauge, it would be eleven gauge thickness. You don't have to put an option, uh, a value in here, but just it just helps with the speed of the algorithm. But you can leave it zero if you so wish. If I go to the next step, again, now we see we start to see some pictures here with some A, B, C, Ds, etc. This is just asking me how much I want to encapsulate the part, how much bigger I want the part to be, uh, the fixture to be than the part. So, I want it to go um, two inches outside the box in X and Y. And I want it to go up the sides by one inch and. Uh, 
Typically, you just, you put in your favourite numbers and leave them, and it will remember them next time. For the other options, we don't really need to change those. And uh, actually, I will probably I will show you a way where, in essence, the these two uh, z heights up the side, the um, the c and d parameter, are overwritten by boundaries. Boundaries give us a lot more flexibility um, on the over the basic way of doing it. If you don't use boundaries, which I'll explain in a moment. On this page, we do the base plate, how much bigger the base plate needs to be. We were saying four inches bigger, so it's bigger than four inches in the extent of the part. You put, we put um, some radiuses on the corner. Uh, on the bottom left, we put a chamfer of the same value, so you know where the bottom left is. And then in this field here, if you have a rotary axis, uh, your head and tail stock arrangement, you can put in the dimensions of your head and tail stock, so uh, so the so the, the base plate fits uh, the, the, you know, the the limitations of that rotary axis. These are the boundaries I talked about. These are very useful for controlling the height of a of a of a, sort of a fixture, uh, filling over holes. You can also fill holes in in a preparatory sense. On this modify 3D uh, menu, you can fill holes and gaps. Uh, but this is another way of doing it inside the wizard. Uh, I'm going to draw an envelope boundary. There's several different types. There's envelope, offset, line arc, rectangular. You can draw your own shape basically with line arc. But en envelopes are most used. I'm going to make an envelope that's two and a half inches bigger than my, my selected solid bodies. So I, I'll create click the create bounding limit option and I'll pick my solid. It could be solids, but I've only got one. Press the enter key and it's drawn me a it's kind of transparent boundary. I'll move it down in the Z axis a little bit just for the sake of the example. You can tilt these, scale them, mirror them. Uh, do whatever you need to do. You can have different shapes. But if you can imagine, the software doesn't know the difference between this boundary and the solid model. So by giving it a boundary, I'm limiting the, the, the fixture to the height of that boundary. So they're very, very useful, especially in tubular parts where you've got lots of um, you know, uh, 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 compound angles, etc. They're good for cleaning up geometry. Uh, you've got options here to rotate, scale, move, freeform, translate, etc. Um, again, you can play with those. If I go to the next option here, this is where we can do a grid of, of uh, components. So I could do four of these in X and three in Y, so I get end up with twelve components in one or in one in one fixture. So it's a way of doing multiple multiple parts in one fixture. Uh, you, if you do that, you just basically create create the grid array, and uh, it will make the base plate bigger. So you can put extra blades in the base plate for the other parts. This is uh, one of the core functions of the software. This is where we draw our fixture lines. So uh, I might say, you know, give me an automatic size and it will draw them every 3.6 inches. If I'm not happy with that, I can just say all in three and three, and generate them. And then it's drawn them every 3.3 and three inches. Okay. You can also uh, move them, scale them, shrink them. Uh, you can add your own lines, uh, user defined lengths or ones that fit within a window. Uh, there's a myriad of different ways. You don't have to draw the fixture lines over the complete part. So obviously, for this box, it makes sense. But if you had a, a very long part with tube, a tube part with a couple of uh, weldments on each end, you don't need to put fixture blades all the way across the center of the tube. You can put them just at the ends. It really is up to you how you do it. Uh, you have the option there. When you add them, you can add them and undo them, um, delete lines, etc. You can also make the lines uh, a certain thickness. You can change the thickness from the default 11 gauge material to another thickness. You may want to make a line a half inch or something for some reason. So you can change individual lines to be different thicknesses too. For the sake of our example, I'm going to modify my fixture line positions because I'm not quite happy with them. So I'll go to an XY view and I'm going to uh, move a couple of these lines. So I'll select the lines to edit. I'm going to, I'm going to select this one press the enter key and I'm going to move it down up the no, let's just change that to a 0.5 increment I'll move it down in the on the uh, uh, negative Y and it's moved it down and I'll choose another one here I'll move it up plus Y I'm going to select these outside ones and move them out a little bit so I'm going to move them minus X and move this one plus X And then, you know, I'm happy with that. I, what I want to do though is I'm going to get my, my welding torch is going to come into these corners on the outside. So I've got a little bit of a problem getting my, my uh, torch in here. So what I'll do is I'll just shrink those lines back. 
So select shrink and select the four outside lines. So one, two, three, four. And then I'll just say shrink them back two inches. So minus x, plus x, minus y, plus y. So by having the boundary uh, drawn and these lines on the outside, I've got a stiffer fixture. If I didn't have the boundary, it would be okay. I'll just have these lines would be, wouldn't be interlocked with these lines on the outside, uh, which would pro probably be rigid enough. But if you want a really rigid fixture, you can do it this, this way. And having the boundary there gives them the software something to fix you to. So that's why they're quite useful for controlling or adding extra material to a, um, a part for the, for the purpose of fixturing. There's also also options here to draw a sketch boundary, so you could you could you could sketch around the outside of something and remove lines and trim them back. Um, and there's also an option here to uh, do the slots the opposite way. The slots are the interlocking slots where the green and the purple ones interlock. Um, you can reverse that order so that you put the purple ones in um, second which we would normally put the purple ones in first and then put the green ones in on top. It just reverses that order. The minimum Z just means that the fixture, if the lines extend outside the solid boundaries or where, where there's no solids, it must maintain a minimum Z of two inches in this case. And in this case, it doesn't matter because we don't, none of our lines go outside the bound, boundary or outside the solid bodies, so it doesn't matter. But it's just a minimum Z height to maintain. But it's the next step. This is where our tab foot is uh, created. I can say, give me a good size, it said uh, 1.8. So I'll just say one and a half inches. Um, basically, so this is the little tab that goes into the base plate. It, inter it just sits in the base plate and uh, you spot weld it in there. If you put a dimension D in there, however, say you put in like a, let's put in a half inch, it will it will make an interlocking slot that will clip into the base plate and lock the, um, the the whole fixture to the base plane. So it's a way of creating a breakdown fixture where you can put it together, use it for uh, the purpose of, for the, the welding run you're doing. And at the end, you can break the fixture down, lay it down flat. So it makes it a kind of collapsible fixture. So you can either leave the D zero and then you you basically make your base plate, your, your B dimension of material thickness, 1196, or you create a an interlocking slot at dimension D and then you make your dimension uh, E would be also 1196 but my B would be bigger I'll make it 0.25 so B would B would be a bit thicker and the uh, dimension E would be my base plate thickness of course once I've got this done I've got to have to have I'm gonna have to have the base plate up on some sort of risers or some bushings um, which will could be bolted through the bolt holes that are on the base plate but uh, that's, that's really the, the, the purpose of this. You can also add your own user-defined positions, etc. This option is uh, for in importing solid models of clamps. You can import them and uh, from uh, downloading them from, for instance, Destaco's website. We prepare them as a parasolid and a few preparatory options we have to do to get them correct. But then you can import them and, in, and then place them on the model and it will uh, create a little tower for that for that particular fixture to uh, sorry that particular clamp to sit on top of uh, once they're imported you can reposition them you can rotate them around xyz to get them to funny compound angles if needed um, but very flexible I, we won't go through this pr this process right now maybe another video on that part, that on this part but um, again you've got your library of clamps you can create you can save them and re-import them into the model this option is a uh, additional option which we will also cover in another video which is for clamping from the top side. It creates a bridge fixture that make, allows you to locate a component um, from the top side of the, of the of the weldment versus as well as the bottom side. So if you had to locate a, um, a nut or a, some kind of cylinder for instance over the in the center of this box on the top side it allows us to create this hybrid clamp that will locate that and um, then you can weld top and bottom. This option is a to be uh, to be continued. It, it's the weld positions we're looking at: kinematic simulation, uh, welding, uh, creating the weld positions in the model, and then uh, post-processing with kinematic uh, collision checking for for uh, any generic welding robot. Something that's coming in the future. For now, we just go next. This option 
allows us to offset the, the fixture perimeter. So when so you can make the blades, the purple and uh, green blades, uh, so, you know, ten thousandths bigger. So you've got some you know, some clearance. Um, you can also use gripper points. These gripper points just make uh, every distance B, which is one inch by default, we could put a fifty thousandth uh, radius. So it'll offset the fixture by fifty thousandths, and every inch put a fifty thou radius there, a bump, and then the, the part is then just sitting on the, the bumps on the edge of the blade versus the whole periphery of the blade. Some people like this for less friction or for adjusting the fixture in the real world, you may need to file these bumps down in places. Um, so it's just a way of making the, the fixture oversized. Um, you can also do that after the fixture is finished with a direct editing option, which again will be in another video, where you can just, after you finish creating the video, you can do sort of direct editing and change discrete uh, geometries inside the fixture. The inset picture here is not used very often, but it's a way where you can uh, insert these slots into the fixture edge, and then you can you can um, almost like weave in some low, low friction material like copper into the fixture, like a basket, so that the component is sitting on this copper material, which isn't going to scratch it. It's very useful for people with, who, are, who are making aluminum boxes who don't want to mar the surface as they pull the component out. So just a different option really there for people who need that. Next step is weight reduction. If you wish, you can. it will try to put, uh, based on these tolerances and values, it will put holes in the fixture. This could be useful for access with a torch, weight reduction, ventilation, so the fixture doesn't get so hot, etc. Um, so you can do it for the base plate and you can do it for the blades. This page sets the uh, corner relief in the base plate. Uh, when where the slot, where the little feet fit into the base plate, we have a little bit of corner relief, Mickey Mouse ears, as I call them. You can also give it some oversize, so a little bit of clearance on the in the x and y direction too. This option is a pin tower option, um, where you would have maybe uh, traditionally put a machine pin in a in a fixture, so you could locate through a feature in the in the weldment. This does the same thing. What you do is you, you, you choose a circle or a square, whatever shape you like, and you pick the edges of the square, and it will then project a tower um, underneath that position so you can locate through that feature in the, in the, in the weldment model. Uh, there's two types, one for a bigger hole, one for a smaller hole. Um, so you can choose which one suits you for the particular uh, you know, feature you're trying to fit through. Very useful for that, maybe useful for painting fixtures. You can turn off all the other blade lines and just keep the keep the um, the uh, pin tower the definition towers so you could have something you could use for a painting fit fixture if necessary. This is where we define our bolt hole parameters within the base plate, so we can just do a standard pitch for whatever your robot table has and, and a diameter, and then you can decide where you want them across the extents or just on the corners or just on the edges. Or if you've got a rotary axis, you can actually type in user-defined positions so they match up to a picture frame you may have attached to your rotary axis. This option is where we set the uh, viewing, how we want to see our parts, translucency. There's a lot of advanced options here for uh, changing the geometry, which again, you would normally leave as default. But on the advice of technical support, we may change some of these depending on the topography of your, your component. It, on the first page or second page, I asked about the material thickness, the, the, the uh, thinnest um, uh, rib you would encounter in the model. This is why this is where it's used. So if you typed in 1196, based on the, that value, it will give us a different set of parameters here. These are very important. They uh, they, they affect the, the way the fixture is calculated and the accuracy. It's actually outlined in the uh, PDF file, uh, the Getting Started Guide, of what, what these mean, if you want to refer to those. Uh, but for the sake of this, we'll just uh, move on to the next step. This is our uh, final stage where we can put in a, a, a label for the base plate, um, the offset from the edge, etc., the font size, and whether we want to um, cut through annotation on the blade. So the first blade will be X1 for the horizontal one, X2 for horizontal one, uh, three, two, X3, etc. And the vertical ones would be, sorry, that was wrong. They would be maybe Y1, Y2, Y3. And then I'll see the vertical ones will be X1, X2, X3. You can also put a part number in here. Uh, a lot of these bubble, these tooltip helps give you assistance on what you can do in addition. Uh, once you're at this stage, you can then do a preview. And 
waits the, fi the fixture to uh, do its preview. Okay, now it's our preview complete. This dialog box comes up, tells you if you've got any trouble, you can go back and check some of these options. You can turn that off actually in the um, in the options dialog. You could say, um, it's an option here, do not show completed dialog and it will not show you that because after a while you get used to the message. So there's my fixture. I can then toggle it. I can say toggle apart, show me with and without. Um, I can change it to any isometric, to a, a, an X, Y, X, Z, view, etc. If I'm happy with that, I can create the fixture. If I can go back to any of these steps and I can change any of those options. Uh, I can say, you know, I want it to be um, a little bigger, maybe. I want to extend my lines. I can go back to any option there, any value in the, each page. What I'm going to do is create the fixture. Again, it might take a moment to create. Doing it a little bit quick, it'll be doing it now at a higher resolution and a little uh, more accurate than the preview method. generating it now and there's our box you'll notice it's got the gripper points on because I selected to use the little bumps so you'll see that these little bumps along the edge of the periphery included base plate the end toggle the part in and out these two items here are uh, storage clips, so if you have the option set, if you were to stack all the purple um, ones together, they would fit in between this slot here, and if you stacked all the green ones, they fit between this slot here. So they're storage clips, so when you lay it down on the shelf, you can just cut as many of these as you like to keep the thing nicely tight, nicely stacked together. So when I'm at this stage now, I now can do my final uh, option to export to DXF. I have options to change the geom what layer goes, uh, the geometry goes on, what layer the etching goes on, and different colors, etc. You can also scale the DXF if you so wish. I export to DXF. I can choose a folder. It does a backup file for me. Then it takes each individual blade and exports it to DXF. You can see on each blade the uh, the etching will be on each one. Do the base plate next. Take some screenshots. And it'll actually bring me on my other screen 
a report of each of the area of each component and the accumulative size so how much material you need to cut the fixture out I click done I can then save my component if I wish or I could export it so if I went to the file I can do a data exchange and I can export it to a parasolid or a 3D IGIS and I can import it into another CAD system if I so wish. With regard to where the location of the files are, I have mine on my, uh, my C drive. And under temp, box nucleo fixture files, and then each in here we've got each particular DXF and then we've got a picture of each one and the report which we did just mention with the, the usage of the uh, sheet metal. So that's really it. That's it in a nutshell, the, the process from A to Z. There are some advanced options we, we would do different videos for, which I discussed, the clamping and the direct editing. Um, but that's a getting started guide. If you have any questions, please email us at support at camtech-software.com. Thank you.